One of the most challenging injuries to heal is tennis elbow. And it's mainly because trainers and therapists don't understand exactly which muscles to attack, which muscles are actually weak that's causing the strength here, the tennis elbow, to overwork. So we're gonna show you a testimonial from one of our clients here, and then we're also gonna go in and we're gonna show you the anatomy so you understand exactly which muscle that you need to target and how to target it in order to eliminate tennis elbow. So how long have you had tennis elbow for? Uh, it's at least over a year now. And where was the pain exactly? On the outside of my elbow. And it would radiate down to my wrist. And now this was caused by what, what job do you do? Hammering, uppercut style hammering, regular style, you know. And now we've done about six sessions doing the exercise for your shoulder and for your wrist. And where's it at now? I have zero pain all day long. Keep in mind that we also put another video out last year on how to train the finger extensors here in order to eliminate the tennis elbow. That's only one part of the equation in order to fix it. This is the main foundation exercise that we use, and then we start adding that exercise in later on. So if we're using a hammer, okay, or we're playing tennis, what typically happens is, is our wrist is going to be an extension. So when we take the hammer back or the where we take the racket back, okay, we're extending this this way. So what happens is, is that the extensor di digitorium, this main muscle here, becomes super overdeveloped. What we're also doing is, is we're gripping this way, okay? So we're grip, we're holding and gripping, we're using the extensors, but we're also using the hand flexors. And your gripping muscles is your digitorium extensor superficialis here, and that's the other primary mover that's going to do your grip, most of your grip squeezing for you, okay? So these basically become super over dominant and overdeveloped, and that's what leads to the tennis elbow. When you grip squeeze, okay, this is what you're gonna be, this is your primary mover here, all right? And it's gonna work right in conjunction with this here. This is gonna really stabilize while you're gripping, and then this is gonna be doing most of the work. So that's why this takes so much torque here. So how do you fix that? Well, the main muscle that's not being trained is basically your wrist flexors right here, okay? So your hand flexors are getting developed, but your wrist flexors are getting super underdeveloped. Okay, this is your flexor carpi radialis, okay? This is your main muscle that's going to extend, the, I mean, flex the wrist this way. And it works alone with this muscle right here, okay? So these are the two that you're gonna be training during this exercise to get rid of tennis elbow and also start developing carpal tunnel. So if you're developing tendonitis in the wrist down and through here, uh, or you start developing early symptoms of uh, carpal tunnel from typing, it's the exact same principle. So what's happening is, is look at your wrist here. So your wrist is, is, is up in extension, okay? So you're using your hand extensors, except you're not, you're not gripping and squeezing, so you're not putting as much torque onto the, the ex, uh, extensor digitorium. And then what else is, is that you're constantly doing this, okay, so you're using that superficialis muscle right in through here, okay? So in order to correct that, it's gonna be the same principle. You need, to tra you need to train the wrist flexors so that you can take torque off the superficialis here. So to train this exercise, you wanna make sure that the band is nice and low when you're pulling up from a low point here, okay? And you can use one of these bands or you can also use one of these bands here. But it's really important, and we're gonna explain this too, is not to hold the handle, okay? You're actually gonna be holding the grip and it's gonna be hanging here. We're gonna explain why. And the same with this here. You don't wanna be holding it like this. You wanna be holding it down underneath your fingers here when you're gripping. So again, when you're doing this, make sure it's low. And you're gonna grip it like this because we don't want to grip it here like this and do normal forearm exercises, okay? Because now what you're doing is, is you're training that, the superficialis that we talked about, okay? We want to take the pressure off that. We want to just focus on those, the, the, uh, the ulnaris and also the radialis there, those flexor muscles that are involved in that chain there, okay? So what we want to do is we want to grip it here with our fingers. So feel like it's like it's hanging on your fingers here. When, and then what you're gonna do is just make a really light grip, okay? Just 
and then take your thumb and just put it here. This is why we call it the bear claw because it kind of looks like a bear claw, okay? Feel like you're just holding like a, like a bird very lightly, okay? That type of feeling there. So all the stress is going right where these knock, right where these four knuckles are. You're feeling like the, the band's pulling right towards that there, okay? And all you're gonna do is, if this is straight in line, okay? Just take a 45 degree angle, and then what you're gonna do is, you're just gonna hook this back behind you. Okay, if I'm just coming straight out here, I'm taking that 45 degree angle with my hips. The here straight, I'm moving 45. Look at where the wrist is. It's behind the butt line, okay? It's behind it, okay? And my hip angle is the same way that my wrist is moving here. So here's my hips here, and look at the angle. It's moving at the, it's moving at the same angle that the hips are in. Okay, I'm not going back behind like this. Everything stays in line with the hip line, just like that. So just squeeze, contract, and that's all you do, just like that. And just kind of hold it and feel it. And you'll, if you're doing it right, you'll feel it right up this, this side here and right on this side here. That's how you know. And you're not going to feel anything down the center. We're taking that out there. So another really important factor if you're dealing, dealing with tennis elbow, okay, is the fact that if you have a weak external rotator cuff, infraspinatus, also your lats, teres major, okay, if you don't have that support structure, every time you go to swing and hit tennis or if you're hammering and you have that tennis elbow, okay, this acts as like a shock absorber, so more force is going to be put on this. So in order to really fix tennis elbow, you also have to fix the shoulder. And if you want to learn our entire rehab system, not just for tennis elbow, but also how to fix your shoulder, your hips, lower back injuries, etc., it's called Corex 12. 12 exercises to fix your entire body.